Since the COVID-19 outbreak, we've been hearing this constant refrain. Don't forget to wash your hands. Washing hands with soap multiple times Washing a day. Washing your hands regularly with soap Wash your hands water. with soap and water. Because we've been told these are a hotbed for germs and viruses. I wonder just how dirty are our hands and what kinds of scary diseases can they spread? To find out, I'm starting with a typical Singaporean family. The Chiu household consists of dad, Ziming, mom, Yokling, their nine-year-old son, Desmond, and grandma, Li Eng. Like many of us, they go through routine daily activities. So, how often do you guys wash your hands in one day? Oh, because my job is a mechanic. Mm. Uh, my hand will be very dirty, oil and all this. Normally, I wash my hand roughly at least about maybe 20 times. At home, not really much lah, because only then we start to uh, prepare food, then we'll wash our hands. Mm. Uh, Yogling, how about you? When do you find you normally wash your hands? Mm. Whenever, after the toilet break or over at the office pantry. Desmond, how about you? Your Ooh. parents normally go and ask you to wash your hands? Yeah. Uh, they do? <laughs> so you don't go by yourself? You won't. Okay. Why don't you wash your hands? Because uh, I don't like washing my hands. Too lazy <laughs> la. <laughs> Auntie, how about you? So among all of you, who do you think has the dirtiest hands? I think it's my boy. <laughs> Because some of the areas which I think he won't touch, he will go and touch. Desmond, how about you? Who do you think has the dirtiest hands? Uh, the four of us? Who? The father. The father, yeah. Why? Why? Because he always touch the cars and all those materials, so it's dirty. Auntie, who do you think has the dirtiest hands among the four of you? The Chiu family hasn't given much thought about the potential germs their hands could be harboring. Let's face it, before COVID-19 hit us, who has? I'm going to put this family through an experiment. What's going to happen is, you all will go about your day as per normal. And I'm going to come back with one of these. This special gel, which I will apply on them later, will trap all the germs they've picked up in six hours. See you. I want to know whose routine is unknowingly the most dangerous. Six hours later, Hi. I'm Good back at the tubes. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get your samples now, okay? Okay, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, then just press down on the, on the gel. Thank you very much. See you. See you. I've got their samples with me and I'm bringing them to a lab to test what kinds of germs are in these petri dishes. Now, there are over 500,000 different kinds of germs, referring to bacteria, viruses and microorganisms like parasites and fungi. That's just too many of them. So I'm going to specifically test for nasty bacteria and fungi. These are bacteria that can cause diseases like salmonella and staph infections, while fungi are microorganisms that can cause respiratory diseases. The samples are going to Dr. Crystal Wong from Changi General Hospital. She spends her days in this microbiology lab, analyzing all forms of bacteria. Hi, I have brought the samples from the family. Oh, the samples I brought in will be cultured for two days to allow the bacteria and fungi to grow before Dr. Wong identifies if there are any dangerous ones lurking in the hands of the chews. While waiting for the results, I've arranged to meet infectious disease expert Dr. Raymond Fong. Uh, this is your chest x-ray. Seems like you have a lung infection. He's been encouraging his patients to wash their hands even before COVID-19 got everyone obsessed over clean hands. I'm hoping he can tell me why now, more than ever, we should be vigilant about how clean our hands should be. Dr. Fong, what kind of germs can we get on our hands? 
the usual germs on our hands don't usually cause much problems. Sometimes we can get other types of germs that can cause diseases onto our hands, germs that can cause diarrheal diseases and respiratory infections. Some of them can cause really serious diseases. They can get into our intestines and cause food poisoning. Yeah. And food poisoning can lead to um, dehydration. In fact, they can cause uh, septic shock and even death if not early and properly treated. But we've been living with these germs for you know, so long, with not many people falling sick. Why should we be concerned now? There are some germs that are, can cause diseases um, that's always been there. Now there are also new germs, uh, new viruses and bacteria such as coronaviruses that can cause diseases in, in us. Um, previously, it wasn't there before. These can get onto our hands and, and it can cause infection. With new diseases emerging rapidly, cleaning our hands has never been more important. But where are these germs living? To find out, I'm getting down and dirty all around Singapore. Oh man, there's like food particles inside the sink. And reveal some shocking results. I found that our hands are a potential transmission source for diseases, which can result in death. But do our daily activities actually allow germs to thrive on them? It's been two days since I sent the handprint samples of the Chu family to Dr. Crystal Wong. The results are out. I am bringing the Chu's with me to Changi General Hospital for the review. So, who in the family has the dirtiest hands? Well, as you can see, what's displayed in front of you are bacterial growth. What's really striking and obvious is mum's handprints yeah. have the busiest and heavily concentrated bacteria. So she has the most number of bacteria? Yes, very concentrated bacteria, especially over her fingers, you can see, compared to the rest of the family, Junior, Granny and mm. Dad. And why do you think that's so? We've concluded perhaps mummy is the busiest person. She's go around touching things, working, doing the household, going shopping. Yeah, and I think the other day you mentioned that you actually we went, went to... to provision shop mm. to buy some grocery. Mm. And family. bought food as well, right? Yeah, for my mm. boy. Oh yeah, so that could be why, because the bacteria are found on a lot of surfaces. So doorknob, handle, shopping trolley, money, you know, your wallet, your purse, handphones. In contrast, maybe dad at work, he comes back, you know, busy, but he washes his hand first thing. Yes, I'm a mechanic, always need to wash my hand at all times. All the time. So visibly, you see your hands dirty, so you have to wash, compared to say mum, who's yeah. only touching everyday things, handbag, doors, and so we forget that we are at the same time, you know, collecting or, or in contact with bacteria all the time. What are the implications for her? So, thankfully, all the bacteria that we see are harmless bacteria. But potentially, it tells us that if we came in contact with harmful bacteria and you pick up something that is nasty and then you transfer it onto your hand, you touch your family member, maybe you're cooking, then that's when it becomes a problem. Were you guys worried about your sample results? Yes, I think I will start to wash my hands more frequently and when hand washing with water is not available, I think I use hand sanitizer. <laughs> Since the COVID-19 outbreak, our local authorities have stepped up disinfections at contact points like lips because these are surfaces that people touch on a regular basis. But are lift buttons the dirtiest of all touch points? I'm going to find out. I'm ready to go swab the surface. I'm swabbing common touch points all over Singapore. Lift buttons, shopping trolleys. Oh man, there's like food particles inside the sink. Soap dispensers in public washrooms, escalator handrails, the MRT poles we hold every day, and food trays at hawker centres. Even my cash and handphone aren't spared. This is where the most contact is. I'm sending the swabs to a lab. We're looking for traces of dangerous bacteria.
So what do the test results actually show us? Escalator handrail is the bacteria. least amount of bacteria and the highest amount of uh, bacteria is a food trace. Oh. This means uh, the food is supporting the bacteria growth, so you can see high number of bacteria on the food surface, on the food trace. Mm -hmm. There are some other high numbers yeah. like a soap dispenser oh. and uh, mobile phones. Wow. So it turns out our phones aren't the dirtiest, as far as bacteria count is concerned. The touch point with the lowest count are escalator handrails followed by MRT railings and lift buttons. In the middle, we have money, shopping trolley, mobile phone. And the most bacteria, soap dispensers found in public washrooms, followed by food trays, which has more than 200 times the amount of bacteria compared to escalator handrails. But having the most bacteria count doesn't make them necessarily dangerous. Remember, we're looking out for bacteria that can harm us. So the team zoomed in on two of the most common disease-causing bacteria that can be found on surfaces we touch. E. coli, a bacteria found in feces that can cause fever, vomiting, and severe diarrhea. And Staphylococcus aureus, that can cause blood infections and pneumonia. Where was the surface that had the most amount of... Uh, uh, as per the bacteria? result analyzed, the soap dispenser in the toilet. We got high count. But don't I still need a soap dispenser to wash my hands? Once you touch the soap dispenser, it's already contaminating your hand. Only the shopping trolley mm -hmm. and the hand phones got uh, cephalococcus aureus. Dr. Renu Gopal found the highest concentration of staph bacteria on the mobile phone, followed by the shopping trolley. Staphylococcus aureus or the staph bacteria is commonly found on our skin. It's not harmful until it multiplies by the thousands. If it is in the skin, it's not a problem. If it's going in contact with the food, it'll create a food poisoning. It'll grow in numbers, maybe 100 to 1,000. Serious staph infections can also be fatal if it enters our bloodstream. So all these bacteria that we've been talking about, mm. Um, does it just stay on the surface or is there possibilities of transference from one place to another? It's easy to transmit from one place to one place, by hand or humans, because always we touch the places everywhere, mm -hmm. so it will carry in our hand. So how long do these bacteria actually stay on surfaces? It depends on the surfaces. If the surfaces contain high moisture, it may sustain for more than 24 hours or 10 to 24 hours. If the dry surfaces, Mostly three to four hours it may die off. If I, our hand is moistened, it may contain here more than 10 hours or so. Wow, 10 hours or more. Now that's how long bacteria can stay on these if I don't wash them often. I think I need to find a bathroom to go wash my hands. If the surfaces we touch are as dirty as these results suggest, maybe it is high time we protect our hands from unwanted germs and bacteria by washing them thoroughly. But what kind of cleaning agent is best? I pit regular soap against antibacterial soap and vodka. Bien used the vodka to wash her hands. So what does the count like? It's really surprising. I'm on a hunt to find out just how dirty our hands really are. The highest amount of bacteria is a food trace. And I found out which are the dirtiest touch points. The things we touch are often a hotbed for bacteria, sometimes dangerous bacteria. So we've been told to keep our hands clean by washing them for 30 seconds with soap and water. Cleaning the palms, between fingers, the back of the hands and fingers, thumbs, wrists, and fingernails. But how often do we wash our hands like this? I'm going to put some Singaporeans to the test. When is the last time you washed your hands today? About 3 o'clock. About an hour ago? Uh, I can't remember, actually. Oh, now what 10 over time. <laughs> <laughs> now you wash 10 over time. The last time? Uh, no, no, no. So frequent, uh. Why do you wash more frequently now? Because scale. the violence, uh. Oh, okay. Scale, oh, scale, uh. <laughs> Very scared. 
Twice a day, twice okay. a day maybe. Okay. Yeah. Is there any particular reason why you don't wash your hands more often? It's like a habit thing. Mm. So sometimes you're know, after the toilet, you wouldn't wash your hands. Do you always use soap when you wash your hands? Always. Uh, not all the time. Uh. If you just wake up and like you're really tired, and I'll do the, the cursory wash, uh, like half a pump. I've tried to get away with uh, not washing my hands at all. At home. Mm. Uh, no. Sudden you show that. Well, actually, um, there is a little system to wash your hands with. It's like a seven step process to washing your hands. And so it's recommended that you actually do this for 30 seconds. Does right. that sound long to you? Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah. I don't think I will go through all this like, in an extent of washing your hands. Up, you know? Why not? Huh? I think it's a waste of time. <laughs> I do wash um, in between the fingers. Yeah. But not as elaborate as those in the picture, though. No. You nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. We're all rushing for time. And sometimes even 30 seconds can be too long. I'm sharing what I've learned from my simple social experiment with Dr. Ling Moi Lin. She's been conducting training programs in infection control for 25 years, both in Singapore and in the region. I want to know why following the seven steps to hand washing is so important. It's the friction that's important. It's the rubbing. It's just like when you clean surfaces, whether it's the floor or top of the table, if you just glide over it, you're just moving and transferring things. But it's the friction of rubbing, you know, and making sure that there's chemical contact with the germs. That's very, very important. As you can see, people think that just using water alone is enough. Do you think that's the case? Oh, of course it's not enough. Because you need something like soap. It kills germs. Do you have to wash your hands for 30 seconds? Because, I mean, it does sound quite long. It seems long because of the time taken mm -hmm. to really cover adequately all surfaces of the hands. And the parts that people usually miss are the webs of the hands or the fingertips. So you do need to spend time to clean all parts of your hands. With all the focus on keeping our hands clean, antibacterial soaps have been flying off the shelves. At the time of filming this episode, many are still sold out online. Antibacterial soaps use chemical agents like orthocyanol and chlorhexidine, which supposedly make them better germ killers compared to normal soap. There's something else I noticed about antibacterial soaps. They're also priced at a premium. On average, they're about 2.6 times more expensive than normal soap. I know they're germ killers, but are they really worth that much more? And guess who is helping me to find that out? All right, let's go! Them. Why? Because they get their hands dirty all the time. For this experiment, I'm giving them 30 minutes of playtime to get their hands on all sorts of surfaces. Okay guys, playtime's up. Do come in. Okay, now you put your four fingers there. Okay. These special gel beds will collect all the bacteria these tiny tykes have picked up. There you go. Before I get them to wash their hands. I'm going to give each of you one bottle of wash, all right? And we're going to wash our hands together, okay? Each child will use a different hand soap. Akshara will use antibacterial soap. Alia, normal soap. And for good measure, Brienne will use vodka. Because, well, I've heard some people are making their own homemade hand wash using alcohol. Each child proceeds to thoroughly wash their hands. And then your thumb. Go! We're going to get another fingerprint sample from you, okay? Then we take another handprint of the clean hand. Thank you. Let's go. I'm heading back to Marchwood Laboratory to compare the results. The gel will be cultured for a few days. Then we'll find out if antibacterial soap is indeed better at killing germs. Two days later, the results are in. So Alia here, she used normal soap to wash her hands. So what's the difference in the bacteria count before and after? Uh, this is the before count. As per the report, we got 314 
and after washing around 260 mm -hmm. uh, there is a drop of around 50 colonies okay so this shows that there's a, there's reduction, a reduction in the bacteria using the normal soap yeah and Akshara, she used the antibacterial soap mm -hmm. to wash her hands after playing the playground. Yeah. Um, what's the difference in numbers there? Uh, our initial count is 250 around uh, colonies. Mm -hmm. And after washing around uh, 180, there are around 70 colonies difference. Mm -hmm. So the normal soap cleaned up about 20% of germs of Alia's hands. While the antibacterial hand wash got rid of about 30% of germs from Akshara's hands. The slight difference, though, could be attributed to how thoroughly both toddlers had washed their hands. I don't see a very significant difference between the two soaps, antibacterial and normal. Why yeah, is that? Actually, the soap itself has some antibacterial activity. Mm -hmm. So it's not that common soap won't kill the bacteria, it also will kill. So is it entirely necessary to purchase uh, antibacterial soap in order to be free from bacteria? I think it's not necessary mm. because common soap also has a germ-killing property. That's why there is no much difference. Rien, she used the vodka to wash her hands. Okay. Um, so what is the count like? It's really surprising. There are high number before washing, mm -hmm. around 340 colonies in the hand. After washing, 140 colonies. It's around 50 to 60 percent reduction. What makes the big difference? Because alcohol is a very strong uh, antibacterial activity or antimicrobial activity. It can yeah. kill bacteria, virus and yeast and mold. So for our experiment, we actually let her wash her hands after she applied the vodka. Does that make a difference in the effectiveness? Uh, it will reduce the effectiveness because it needs sufficient time to kill. Mm. So if you wash it immediately, the effectiveness will come down. Okay, I'm not sure many of us would want to waste a good vodka as a substitute for soap and water. Also, alcohol is very drying to the skin. I think I'll stick to good old-fashioned soap. Even as a guitarist, I still take my hands for granted often. But I've learned that there are many surfaces that have disease-carrying germs. And I've also learned that any soap and water is good enough to protect us. But just to be on the safe side, I should give myself an alcohol scrub.